the past few weeks, I've been working towards yet another rather large Intel leak, with the centerpiece of this information being ZDG2. Now, some things have held this up. The 6800 XT review, the RTX 3070 review that's almost ready, and actually, hopefully soon, a rather large AMP review that... If it comes true, I don't think people will believe the card I was able to get my hands on. But there's another reason this leak hasn't come out quite yet. And that's that, honestly, some of the information that I have is, well, in my opinion, too risky to release. Straight up, I am worried that if I release some of the information, including detailed pictures of Intel ZDG2, I could get some people in trouble. And having sources that deep inside of Intel, it's taken years to build towards. And so it's not even just really to protect them, it's to protect a lot of information that I've been receiving. Now, in this video, I will actually have an exclusive picture of something that I think you guys will be interested in. But for now, you're just going to have to look at the little breadcrumbs I've been dropping, some in the background of videos, and some near the end of a few recent videos that prove I have access to pictures of ZDG2. And if you don't believe me, th that's fine. I personally think my track record of Alder Lake, you know, having Gen 5 PCIe DDR5 months before anyone else covered that, getting the IPC information out there over and over <laughs> correctly before there's Cypress Cove, all these other things spoken for itself. I I'm very confident in my Intel sources, and I've only gotten more confident after gaining a few more in the past few months. So I don't want to do an entire overview today. What I want to do is just have a conversation about what's going on, you know, not as many sexy slides popping up with or pictures popping up with uh, Moore's Law's dead stamped all over it to prove it as a watermark that I leaked it, but more just telling you, if you'll listen, what is going on with ZDG2, what is going on with Ice Lake, and what's going on with possibly an upcoming product that I think should have AMD doing a double take and worrying about if they have any room to coast or rest on their laurels over the next few years, because I just don't think they do. But before I get to the project that I do think should have AMD worried, I do need to give an update on ZDG2. The overall scope of the graphics card that Intel's trying to launch hasn't changed since my leak from a few months ago, where I first confirmed the specs and performance targets that Intel is driving for. These cards exist. The top die is, is 512 execution units. I've triple confirmed that now, and it will have a 256-bit bus almost certainly with 16 gigabytes of RAM. I personally can't see Intel launching this with 8 gigabytes by the time this would be ready to come out, which on that note, that, that's kind of what I'm saying is it's in validation right now, and it is not like a final stage. It's not almost ready. With that in mind, I don't think anyone should expect this to be ready late summer like some people were hoping, including Intel, by the way, it would be half a year ago. I think at the earliest, you're going to see some release of DG2 at the end of this year. And while some of my more pessimistic sources are coming around a little bit to the fact that this may actually launch to consumers, I, I think I have to stand by that I find it highly unlikely a high-end Z graphics card will launch in large volume to consumers at the end of this year. What I suspect, and again, none of my sources are sure when this is coming out. So I just have to give an estimate, just kind of like you estimate when all Intel things come out, because even they don't get it right. My estimate for what's going on with ZDG2 is there will be some kind of a Vega Frontier release in late quarter three or quarter four. Uh, maybe an Intel Odyssey edition instead of Vega Frontier edition from Raja. And that that will precede the release of the main volume of consumer graphics cards in quarter one. That is what I believe is going to happen. And the idea that nothing's coming out, I think is a almost zero chance now, though. That's not to say that I'm sure they will have a lot of great cards outside of an expensive, shall we say, semi-professional card like Vega Frontier, but it is to say that this thing... It seems on track for a release, just not in high volume this year. And when it comes to the node, 
it did seem like it was on six nanometer for a while, but at this point, I feel the need to just say some form of six or seven nanometer. That is what ZDG2 seems to be. And outside of that, my only other thoughts are that if Intel can bring something that, well, let's be honest, I don't even think the overall efficiency matters. I just think it matters that it's under 250 watts and comes above a 3070 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. If they can launch something like that, and you know, it can do ray tracing decently well, which Intel's already been working on even for their integrated graphics, and it has stable drivers, and it can hit like a $400 price point, I really do think it could help the market because... Let's be honest, the 6700 XT should have been a $400 card. The 3060 should have been a $300 card. And the 3070, as you'll see in my review, I don't know. I think of it as kind of a $450 card. I do think it could shake things up to have something even somewhat officially at $400 that is competitive in performance with these other competitors. Someone needs to be a check on what's going on in this duopoly with NVIDIA and AMD. However, the fact that it will be made at a TSMC node makes me question how much of a difference it will truly make. I think it would help. A more competition, something else on the market that you can choose from, um, I, think, I, I think will help. But unless Intel finds some way of securing like some massive 6 nanometer capacity that shakes things up in that way, I, I am skeptical it will make a big difference. And so... Yeah, I guess that's all there really is to say about ZDG2 right now. ZDG2 is a live. It is not a canceled product. Not right now, but it is definitely not on schedule, although I certainly hope it succeeds. Now, the next thing I actually want to talk about is going to have a small exclusive leak here, and that's Intel Ice Lake server. Of course, they've always had this big die that I've covered for I don't know, I think maybe a year now, up to 40 cores. The, the plan, though, from this 40 core die was to probably just release something between, oh, I was always told around 36 cores, something between 32 and 38 cores. I do now know from one source, as you will see in this exclusive picture here, that they are testing and validating 40 core samples now, and these are named CPUs, Platinum 8380. It's the same as uh, the name that we have out now, just minus the HL at the end. So the Platinum 8380, from what I am told, will at least be released to the public in a very real way, at least to super scalers, to specific customers. And there are some sources saying that, in fact, Intel may even put this up as a generally available product. So I think that's worth mentioning because if all Intel could make is a 28-core Ice Lake <laughs> server part, that that, and it's cut down from 40 cores or something... Or, or I know they have a 32 core coming as well. If they had to cut that down from 40 cores, that really is not the great sign you would want that they're 10 nanometers working. Now, technically, this is on 10, 10 nanometer plus, not on super thin. This is on the same, um, let's say, stage of node that the Ice Lake laptop chips are. So it is worth mentioning that this is a little more problematic than what they're making Tiger Lake and Alder, and then and it much more problematic than what they'll make Alder Lake on, but it is real and it is coming, and it should tell you that Intel's 10 nanometer is very real. So I think that's exciting, and yep, hold it, heard it here first. In some way, a 40-core Ice Lake chip will be coming out, but no, no, not to HEDT, unfortunately. Now, what's the product that I think AMD should be worried about? Well, for a while, we've been talking about how we're waiting for AMD's heterogeneous mega epic APUs. You know, I had an anonymous server engineer on Broken Silicon a few times who talked about how his dream socketed server chip would be an APU that has enough cores and a powerful compute graphics card built in to just save on complexity and cooling. You know, you don't need to have a bunch of slots of graphics cards and loud fans cooling the whole thing. You can just have one socketed APU that has a powerful graphics card built into it. Then you can make the rack thinner too and just have two cooling uh, heat sinks on both sockets. That's what a lot of people want, and I think that's what a lot of people are expecting AMD to bring out first with something in Zen 4 or Zen 5. You know, AMD is typically at least perceived as being ahead of Intel and APU technology. I mean, look at the consoles they made. Why, why aren't they releasing an Epic chip or a Threadripper chip like this? And from what I'm hearing, 
I do not believe we can confirm something like this is coming out in the next year, but there is a Skunksworks project at the very least going on inside Intel where they are looking into making an APU version of Sapphire Rapids. Now, to be clear, this could certainly turn out like, I don't know, SMT4 on Zen 3, something they looked into that never was released. But when I look at the complexity of Ponte Vecchio and the four chiplet design of Sapphire Rapids, links in the description to the original people who leaked those pictures, I have to say that I don't see why Intel wouldn't be looking into this. You know, if Sapphire Rapids, as I confirmed, is going to go up to 56 cores and that should be divided into four chiplets kind of organized in a Zen 1 epic way, why not have a product, an SKU, that with the HBM2E on die also removes one of those chiplets or two and puts Z compute chips? That's what I'm told they're working on, that there is a Sapphire Rapids team looking in to instead of having four GPU uh, CPU chiplets, having at least one of them be a Z compute chip and then extra HBM on board to assist. That's something Intel's looking into. And if Ponte Vecchio launches and it works pretty well, I don't see why I don't see why Intel can't do this. And if they're already looking into this with Sapphire Rapids and we don't have confirmation on Zen 4's mega APUs, to me, that tells me Intel may be behind and they may be screwing up. And we and let me be very clear. I don't believe that we should bet on Intel until they can prove a successful launch of Alder Lake and hopefully Z. Though, if those two products were both good, that's when I think you can say Intel's back. But you can't say it until they're out because they've screwed up a lot of things recently. But when I hear about projects like this, if I was AMD, I would start to get worried that Intel's just going to leapfrog us at the end goal, right? The end goal should be heterogeneous mega chips for servers, for desktops that reduce latency by putting everything onto one big package and if intel can get there first that's a problem that shows you that intel isn't just looking backwards looking to kind of try to catch up at every step amd is doing that they might be trying to leapfrog to the end of the ultimate product when you put a bunch of chiplets together so I don't know. I believe that's exclusive that I'm talking about that first, and I'm not confirming that will ever come out. But I am telling you, Intel is working on that, and that should worry AMD. Furthermore, what should also worry AMD is Pat Gelsinger, because I'm telling you, everyone I talk to at Intel, connected to Intel, says their current CEO is a rock star, and he should have been their CEO a long time time ago. I am told that already within Intel, there is this feeling of optimism and drive and the repercussions of some of the direction he's giving from the top down is making things flow a lot better. So in other words, Intel, they've got a great CEO again. They really do from what I'm hearing far better than probably any they've had in the past two decades. And it seems like they're also looking into some very innovative products that, well, they haven't proven they can do it yet. That's the type of thinking that is not just this, you know, bullshit iterative crap that got them to fall behind AMD in the first place. In other words, I don't think AMD has anything to worry about this year. I can't even say Rocket Lake without laughing. And I don't think Alder Lake's, you know, really going to beat Zen 3 Plus, but I do think it could, you know, take back the gaming crown. But I do think if Intel can get its ass in gear, they really are something to be worried about by the end of 2022 and certainly 2023, assuming they can get their node working. But when I look at what's going on with their foundries now, they seem to be figuring it out to a certain degree. And they better, because I tell you what, relying on TSMC... AMD is one of their major customers now, and I just don't think Intel can rely on putting some of their products there in the future. They need to use their own fabs, especially because that is a massive advantage. I mean, look at AMD losing market share in the past couple of quarters, despite having record sales. Those fabs are a major, major weapon for Intel if they can get them to catch up even remotely again. And they are working on innovative products with an innovative CP CEO. It's something AMD should be worried about. AMD maybe shouldn't be worried this year, but I think by 2023, they better not be resting on their laurels. Because I do think competition will be back 
them. And that is going to do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed the more, I don't know, laid back presentation style on this one. I just feel like there's enough stuff coming that I shouldn't rush any info out now that could uh, jeopardize sources. So hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please ring the bell button, of course. Please subscribe, ring the bell button, share these videos. It helps so much when you share, especially these past few months where things just seem to not be going well with YouTube for a lot of people. And of course, none of this happens without the patrons. They are the ones that you know, really keep this going. Pay me, pay Dan, pay Gerard and our editors, and you get a lot of exclusive content there if you sign up. So please look for that. And as always, thank you for watching.